Hello, today we are continuing with viscosity and in today's video we will talk about inviscid Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. At the end of this video you will learn how to distinguish between these three types of fluids and you will also know when the assumption of inviscid fluid is valid. Uh, so we will continue where we stopped last time and uh, last time we talked about uh, Newton's law of viscosity and uh, Newton's law of viscosity was in the form tau equals mu dv over dz where tau is shear stress mu is co uh, dynamic coefficient of viscosity and dv over dz is the rate of shear deformation or velocity gradient. We also said that mu is function of temperature but throughout this video we will assume that temperature is constant so there is no dependency on mu on temperature. Now, based on the behavior of mu, we distinguish between three different types of fluids. Type number one is if mu is equal to zero, actually, and these are inviscid fluids. The second type of fluids is if mu is constant, in terms of dv over dz, so not constant in terms of temperature, but rate of shear deformation. If it is constant, then these are Newtonian fluids. And for these fluids, the Newton's law of viscosity in this form applies. And immediately I can tell you that air is indeed Newtonian fluid. And the third class of fluids is where mu really depends on dv over dz and these are called non-Newtonian fluids. And uh, we will first discuss uh, type number one and type number two. The first question we need to ask is, uh, is this assumption of mu equals zero valid and uh, do we have any fluids that are truly inviscid? The answer is no, there are no fluids that are absolutely 100% inviscid, but the assumption of uh, fluid without viscosity or inviscid fluid is very accurate to large amount of fluids, including air. What do I mean by that? Let's consider the flow between two parallel plates that we considered in the last video, so you should check that video, link is in the description. We have two plates and the flow is laminar. And let's assume the flow is from left to right. Under this assumption we saw that uh, due to viscosity there is a no-slip condition right on the wall where velocity is zero and it increases linearly uh, following the Newton's law of viscosity and then it reaches some constant value. So this would be perhaps the profile of velocity if this is, let's assume, air. We see that we have very steep gradient of velocity and gradient is very steep because mu for air is indeed very very small. It's order 10 to the power of minus 5 uh, kilograms per meter per second, which means if we are not interested in this part of the flow, then this part over here is to very good approximation in viscid. So this middle part of the flow is very, very in viscid indeed. If we are interested in phenomena that take place very close to the wall, then we cannot assume that mu is zero and we really need to treat this air using the Newton's law of viscosity. I hope you understand that uh, this profile changes if we have different fluid. If this was, for example, oil, perhaps, then this gradient would be less steep and maybe we would have something like this. Which means that uh, inviscid assumption is really valid only in this region in the case of more viscous uh, fluids such as oil. Now let's generalize this to atmosphere. In atmosphere, we really have only one plate, and that is the surface of the Earth. And similar to this case, we have no slip condition over here. And now, if the flow is again from left to right, 
what will happen in the atmosphere? Well, atmosphere is turbulent. We cannot assume it's laminar. So it is turbulent. So what we will have is that very close to the surface, we will still have a laminar layer or sometimes called laminar sublayer where the Newton's law of viscosity applies. But above that, we have a logarithmic profile, something like this, up to certain height, and then we don't have any change of velocity with height. Here, we have viscosity that is dominating the flow. This flow is really laminar, but this is the scale of millimeters or centimeters in atmosphere. And here, we have part of the profile where turbulence is very important. And here, we have inviscid flow. Indeed, we can also assume that flow is inviscid in this part where turbulence is an uh, important factor, but we have to account for turbulence. In other words, in this part, we can neglect viscosity, so we solve the problem of viscosity, but we introduce the problem of turbulence, which turns out to be a much more complicated problem than viscosity. However, we can assume that flow is inviscid with addition of turbulence. How we add turbulence will be discussed in some future videos. However, you, I hope you can see that this whole uh, profile is really the consequence of no slip condition close to the surface. And the no slip condition is the consequence of, consequence of viscosity. We also sometimes call it surface, rough, uh, surface roughness between air and uh, ground, but uh, we learned in the previous video that uh, roughness between fluid and solid object is also due to viscosity. Okay, so these are uh, these this this was discussion on inviscid and uh, Newtonian fluids. Air, to a very good approximation in many phenomena, is really inviscid fluid. If viscosity needs to be accounted for, then it is Newtonian. Uh, fluid and this uh, relationship, uh, Newton's law of viscosity is valid. Now let's turn our attention to the last class of fluids, which are non-Newtonian fluids. Non-Newtonian fluids uh, are uh, profoundly different from Newtonian fluids in terms that viscosity uh, or dynamic coefficient of, vis of viscosity mu depends on dv over dz, so this whole relationship becomes non-linear. To demonstrate that, we can use this uh, graph. If I plot here dv over dz, which is velocity gradient, and here I will plot tau, which is my uh, shear stress, then for uh, Newtonian fluids, this relationship is linear. We just talked about it. So this would be Newtonian fluids. Now, non-Newtonian fluids come in two, or rather three classes. You'll see what I mean by that. The first class is uh, so-called shear thinning non-Newtonian fluids, and they look something like this. So these are shear thinning non-Newtonian fluids. And uh, for shear thinning non-Newtonian fluids, the viscosity decreases as we increase the rate of shear deformation. So in this case, as dv over dz increases, mu really decreases. And we will see later some examples of these fluids. Another class of non-Newtonian fluids is called shear thickening. Shear thickening non-Newtonian fluids. And we can see on the uh, here, as we are increasing dv over dz, rate of shear deformation increases, mu consequently significantly increases. And the third class of non-Newtonian fluids are called the Bingham plastic, named after uh, uh, Eugen Bingham, who uh, figured them out, who discovered them. And these fluids are really not fluids until you apply certain shear stress, and this shear stress is called offset, or a rather technical term is yield shear. Yield shear, because after this shear, the 
fluid-like substance yields and becomes indeed fluid, and then behavior is typically linear, similar to Newtonian fluids. And we will see some examples. The best example of shear thinning uh, non-Newtonian fluid is blood. Uh, you know that uh, uh, if you cut your arm, then your mother usually tells you, don't shake your arm. Uh, let's say you cut your finger. She says, don't sh uh, shake your finger because uh, your mother knows fluid dynamics of non-Newtonian fluids. And she knows if you shake your finger, the blood will never coagulate. So you need to keep it still. Uh, you, you need uh, not to shake your finger and then the blood will coagulate because blood is sheer uh, thinning uh, fluid. The best example of sheer thickening fluid is uh, cornstarch uh, syrup and we will see later in this video how that looks like. And a good example of uh, Bingham plastic uh, fluid is toothpaste or... Uh, also mayonnaise and so on. Okay, so now when we discussed all these different types of fluids uh, rather uh, quantitatively, I can say here, let's uh, see experimentally, well, not experimentally, let's see in, uh, let, let's see what fluids we have in our kitchen, so to say, that represent these three classes. I will put my experimental platform over here and uh, I will tell you that all gases are non-Newtonian uh, are Newtonian fluids. Sorry, so all gases are Newtonian fluid fluids. Air in this room and everywhere else is Newtonian fluid. Milk is Newtonian fluid. Whiskey is Newtonian fluid. Water is also Newtonian fluid, as well as oil. These are all examples of uh, Newtonian fluids that you can find uh, in your kitchen. And uh, all juices, for example, Coke or any other uh, juice you drink, are also Newtonian fluids. Did you really think I'll drink milk rather than whiskey? But let's see now which one are non-Newtonian fluids. Mayonnaise, non-Newtonian fluid. These triangle cheese are non-Newtonian fluids. Typical example of uh, uh, <clears throat> Bingham plastic, because uh, they will never behave as fluid until we apply some sh uh, shear on them. So this triangle cheese is indeed very easy to spread on bread but you need to apply that initial yielding stress. The same holds for ketchup. Beautiful honey, non-Newtonian fluid. Gem, non-Newtonian fluid. Nutella, non-Newtonian fluid. Shampoo, non-Newtonian fluid. Toothpaste, toothpaste, non-Newtonian fluid. Mustard, non-Newtonian fluid. Ketchup also, I don't have ketchup here. These are all non-Newtonian fluids. Ink in your uh, pen is non-Newtonian fluid because you really need to apply certain... So if you want to write with pen, you need to apply shearing, sh shearing force and then it will write. But my ink is getting dry, so that's that. And also... Uh, gel for setting up your hair to look beautiful is also non-Newtonian fluid. However, however, there is one fluid that you can make in your kitchen that is really mother of all non-Newtonian fluids. And that is uh, cornstarch syrup. By the way, after watching all these uh, non-Newtonian fluids here. I hope next time you go to a bar and you order a burger, you will not ask waitress to bring you ketchup, mayo, mustard, uh, ranch, uh, so on. Just tell her, can you please bring me all non-Newtonian fluids that you have over there and you're good to go. At any rate, this is the ultimate non-Newtonian fluid that you can make uh, in your kitchen. And this fluid is... Uh, 
mix of cornstarch and water to a proportion either one to one or uh, uh, one to two. So for one unit of uh, water, you add two units of cornstarch. This amazing fluid behaves indeed as, uh, for example, milk. You, would, you wouldn't see much difference if I put here milk and cornstarch. However, milk, I can easily put spoon into it. However, what is going to happen here if I put spoon? Well, actually nothing. Spoon will go just as easy as uh, it went in the milk. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is if I try to put spoon hard, I cannot put it in. Why is this? Because this is sheer thickening fluid. You cannot, if you go easy, it behaves as fluid. Look, if you go hard, for example, if you want to do this, you can't put spoon inside. So I know what you're thinking. Is there an ultimate test? Of course. And the ultimate test is hammer. We will try to hammer this fluid. Look, just to demonstrate, if I just put hammer as this, look, it goes easily. It goes like in milk. If I take it slowly out, there is no problem. But if I start hitting it, I cannot go inside. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video. I'll keep hammering. Okay guys, let's discuss what would happen if air was uh, non-Newtonian fluid like this cornstarch uh, mixture. The world would look completely different. First of all, life as we know it would not be, uh, would not evolve uh, the way it is now. Because when we breathe air, we apply some shearing stress on, well, we apply some shearing stress uh, to air when it goes through our nose and uh, the rest of the respiratory system which means that uh, air would thicken and uh, you wouldn't be able to breathe. The air would become so viscous that kind of it would, it, it would result in a solid-like uh, behavior in your body. But let's assume that life evolved somehow uh, differently to be able to breathe fluid like this one. How would the world look like? Well, the world would look profoundly different. What do I mean by that? Let's say you see a guy over there that took your wallet and you want to chase that guy. However, if the air was this type of fluid, the faster you are trying to run, the slower you would move because the air would thicken around you. It's sheer thickening fluid, just like this. And uh, you wouldn't be able to catch the guy. In fact, the slower you try to move, the faster you would move. If you try to run very fast, as I said, you would have a lot of thickening of air around you due to increased non-linear non increase of viscosity and you would never be able to catch anybody. Let me do this a little bit more. Oof. But it would be an interesting world. I hope you enjoyed today's video. See you in the next video and have an excellent rest of the day. Cheers.